from the seat of our government, Washington, D.C., UFO Cover-Up Live. Earlier in the show, we met Bill Moore. Joining us now is Jamie Chanderay, a television producer and director. Both began regular contacts with government agents regarding UFOs six years ago and amassed an enormous quantity of information about the government's UFO program. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, Bill, tell us how you first got involved. I got a phone call after appearing on a radio show from a man who said, you're the only person we've heard talk about this subject who seems to know what he's talking about. He convinced me that he was a government intelligence agent and wanted to begin disseminating some information about UFOs to the public. And the man Bill is referring to is Falcon, whom we've seen in shadow to protect his identity. That's right. I didn't think that I could handle it all alone. The volume of material I was getting from Falcon was rather mind-boggling, so I got together with Jamie. And we joined forces in June of 1982, and Falcon told us about MJ-12. MJ-12 functions as a policy-making group relating to extraterrestrial activities and contacts and UFO activities within the United States. They make the policy, obtain presidential approval, and then field activities implement the policies. How did you acquire the MJ-12 documents? Well, they were mailed to me in a plain brown envelope, which contained President Truman's executive order establishing MJ-12 and the briefing document to President-elect Eisenhower, informing him of the 1947 crash in Roswell, New Mexico, and the recovery of alien bodies. Now then, there were follow-up postcards, Ethiopian picture postcards mailed from New Zealand with puzzles and riddles. Right, the puzzles were clues. For example, for a stylish look, shop suit land. This led us to the National Repository in Suitland, Maryland, where we discovered the existence of top secret documents and filed a Freedom of Information request, which led us further to the Cutler Twining document. Now, all of our meetings with Falcon were secret. Now, wait, gentlemen. Riddles, postcards, secret meetings, code words. Didn't you suspect somebody was pulling your leg? Well, we always looked for a hoax, but within every clue, there was always some verifiable fact. So you were able to verify MJ-12? Validating MJ-12 was difficult because we couldn't find any government agency that would admit publicly that they were aware of MJ-12's existence. Well, so without validating it, how do you get from there to here? Well, after hundreds of hours of research, we're working with experts trying to validate the documents. But most important, the contacts have grown to include Falcon and nine other government agents. And why do you believe them? Well, because we've been able to meet with them, we've been able to check and verify credentials, and it's clear that they are in secret, need-to-know positions. Falcon's position, for example, gives him access to the MJ-12 infrastructure. Why don't we just hear it in his own words? MJ-12 was a group of people within the, the government. MJ-12 was created by President Truman in the early 50s. And their job was to investigate, keep track of information pertaining to UFOs. Part of their job was scientific advancements. But uh, their primary purpose was to keep track of the information coming in on UFOs and to analyze the information, both uh, scientifically and in a way that would advance our technology. There are government officials and elected officials that are automatically briefed on the existence of the MJ-12 activities. These officials include the president, the vice president, as elected officials, the director of central intelligence and the director of the national security agency the mj-12 policy is headquartered at the naval observatory in washington dc the united states navy has the primary operational responsibilities of field activities relating to the mj-12 policies all information gathered in the field, not necessarily by Navy personnel, is transmitted to the Navy for analysis. Other known government agencies feed information to MJ-12 through a top secret cover project known to us as Project Aquarius. Now, MJ-12 connects to select individuals within the National Security Council, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the White House Intelligence Unit, the National Security Agency, the Central Intelligence Agency, and the Defense Intelligence Agency. The research is conducted, the data classified and cataloged, all under the umbrella of strictest national security. 
The MJ-12 table of organization created by Moore and Chandere purports to give us an understanding of a complex intra-governmental chain of command existing solely to oversee, organize, and administer the data on UFOs and ETs. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. When we come back, Falcon and Condor's stunning revelations on the existence of extraterrestrial aliens. Stay with us. An astonishing account of alien corpses found in the desert, next on UFO Cover-Up Live. What Bill Moore and Jamie Chandray's source, Falcon, told us about aliens will astonish you. LBS Communications and Seligman Productions makes no claim in favor of or against the truth and accuracy of this material. We ask only that you watch and listen and make up your own minds. I met with a government intelligent agent with the code name of Falcon in 1983 with Jamie and Bill at the time that I was an executive producer of news for the CBS station in Los Angeles. And at the time, we verified as authentic his credentials. And then again in 1987, we met again with Falcon and again verified his credentials. I'm satisfied at this time that he is who he says he is. The fact that I've proven my identity to you, I've showed you my credentials, and verified my existence within the intelligence community, you also have some of my colleagues who have verified the same information. We asked Falcon where he found out so much about extraterrestrial biological entities or EBEs. This book or it's called the Bible within the MJ-12 community contains historically everything that occurred from the Truman era up through the three aliens being guests of the United States government, technological data gathered from the aliens, medical history gathered from dead aliens that were found in the desert, autopsy information gathered from dead aliens found in the desert and information obtained from the extraterrestrials regarding their social structure and their information pertaining to the universe. Was there an additional source of information? Presently, as of the year 1988, there is one extraterrestrial being. He's a guest of the United States government, and he's remained hidden from public view. The Yellow Book is a book that was exclusively written by the second alien. The book relates to the alien's planet, solar system, suns, the culture, and the society makeup on the planet, the social structure of the aliens, and the aliens life among earthlings what was most intriguing to me in my experience is a i believe an octagon shaped crystal which when held in the alien's hand and viewed by a second person displays pictures these pictures could be can be of the alien's home planet or pictures of earth many thousands of years ago. We asked where the EBEs came from. He was in the uh, Zeta Reticuli star group. Now Condor tells us about a deal our government made with the aliens. Um, from what he understands, an agreement signed between our, our U.S. government and the extraterrestrials. And essentially the agreement uh, says that uh, we won't disclose your existence if uh, you do not interfere in our society and uh, we allow you to operate from a designated uh, base here in the United States. It's in the state of Nevada in an area called Area 51 or Greenland. The extraterrestrials have complete control of this base which is located in Nevada. My understanding is that three different aliens of the same species have resided within the United States from 1948 or 49 until present day. The first alien was captured in the New Mexican desert after 
Its craft crashed. The alien, which was named Eba by the government, was kept in captivity for three years. We learned a great deal of information about the aliens' race, culture, and spacecrafts. The second alien was a part of an exchange program. I don't recall what year that alien visited. The third alien was also part of an exchange program and has been a guest of the United States government since 1982. We asked what they looked like, you know, a run-of-the-mill EB. A creature about uh, three foot four to three foot eight inches tall. Uh, their eyes are extremely large, almost insect style. Uh, their eyes have a couple of different inner lids. The, uh, the days were extremely bright, uh, probably twice to three times as bright as our sun, I think. They have just a, two uh, openings where our nose would be. They have a small mouth. Uh, they have no teeth as we know it. They have a hard gum-like uh, area. Uh, their internal organs are quite simple. They have a, a one organ which uh, does the job of our heart and lungs. Their digestive system is, is really simple. Their uh, skin structure is extremely, uh, it's a very elastic skin and hard, probably hardened from their sun. Uh, they have some basic organs. Their brain is more complex than ours. It has a, uh, several different lobes than ours have. Uh, their eyes are, uh, where our eyes are controlled by the back of our head. Theirs is controlled by the front of the brain. Their hearing is quite better than ours, almost better than the dog's small areas. Uh, their sexual organs, are, they have males and females. Their kidney and bladder is one organ. They excrete waste. They have another organ, which I don't know if our scientists determined what it was for, but they believe it's to transfer the solid wastes and the liquid wastes. They have hands without thumbs. They have four fingers without any thumbs. Uh, their feet are web-like, small web-like. So many questions occur. Do they believe in a supreme being? What's their intelligence level? What's their average lifespan? It's approximately. 350 to 400 Earth years. It's my understanding that the aliens have an IQ of over 200. They have a religion, but it's a universal religion. They believe in the universe as a supreme being. The aliens enjoy music, all types of music, especially ancient Tibetan style music. We asked about their diet. They do eat vegetables. They like vegetables. And their favorite dish or snack is ice cream, especially strawberry. Well, the next time you're in an ice cream parlor, just quietly notice who orders strawberry, okay? As a wrap-up, Falcon and Condor said to us, I personally feel that this information should be presented to the public. There's only a small portion of the information that we've gathered from the extraterrestrials that should be safeguarded or classified. Condor also suggested he'd like to see a congressional hearing on the subject. Interestingly enough, he, Falcon, and a third source have agreed to meet with the senator's staff to discuss all of the information they claim to have concerning UFOs and aliens. From this meeting, a Senate investigation could ensue. Now, if this is true tonight, we're witnessing history in the making.